My name is Seth Schneider, and I'm a software engineer here at Intel. Today we will be looking at the Intel Graphics Performance Analyzer's Frame Analyzer for OpenGL in more detail. If you're new to GPA, be sure to check out some of our workflow videos linked in the description below. In this tutorial, we will be looking at a frame captured from my Intel Android tablet from the application City Racer. To start off, let's assume that we found out that the application was GPU bound in System Analyzer and we're ready for frame analysis. So, let's get started. Let's start by opening Frame Analyzer for OpenGL. Once the application opens, we'll see the Frame Capture dialog. Here we can see the previous frames that we've captured and an Add button. You'll also notice in the top that we are connected to our Android Baytrail tablet. You'll also notice a Settings button. If you click the Settings button, you can input your path to ADB. This will allow you to be able to connect to your Android device. You can also delete frames from this view by clicking X and then, and then saying Yes to delete. You can also add frames. If you click Add, it will connect to your device. Once you've connected, you'll see a list of applications in which you can analyze. Let's choose City Racer. Once the application is running, you will see the FPS indicator in the top right portion of the capture box. Once you are ready, you can capture a frame by clicking the Capture button. Once the frame is captured, you'll see the frame up here in the top bar. To open the frame, we can just double click on the recently captured frame. Now that the frame is finished loading, we can take a short tour through the UI. First, the bar chart is in the top portion of the screen. You also have a small viewing window to view the rest of the bars throughout the scene. Next, we have our API log on the left-hand side, which details the ergs in the bar chart. In the middle, we have our resources pane. We'll discuss this pane in further detail later in the video. On the right-hand side, we have the metrics pane. This pane displays the metrics either in the pipeline view or in a table type view. The last pane here on the bottom right-hand side is the experiments view. We'll also get to this view in more detail later in the tutorial. At the top of the screen here, we have the ERG graph. This graph displays the ERGs throughout the scene. So what is an ERG? An ERG is anything that takes up time on the GPU. This could be a clear call, a draw call, or a copy resources call. To use the ERG graph, you can use this slider to zoom out or in accordingly. You can also change the axes by clicking on this drop-down menu. Let's access our ERG graph by GPU duration and GPU duration. If we zoom out, we can see the entire scene. The largest ergs represent the ergs that took up the most time on the GPU. This is usually where we want to start with optimization. We can select an erg by simply clicking on it. We can also select a grouping of ergs by clicking and holding. When we select an erg, the pane below the Resources Viewer pane changes depending on what erg we selected. Here we can see the resources that affected that erg. For instance, we can see the textures, the geometry, the states, and the shaders involved in that erg, as well as the output merger, or the final render target. Let's go through each of these in more detail. If we look at the texture, we can see all the different texture parameters and the information about the specific texture, such as the size and the format. We can look at the geometry as well. Here we can see one of the road barriers. We can right click to change the shading type, as well as zoom in and zoom out. We can look at the states of this specific erg in the states tab. We could change the coal face from GL back to GL front. The new erg would be calculated with the new states. We can then change it back. Next, let's look at the shaders tab. On the left hand side of the shaders tab, we can see the constant values associated with the shader. On the right hand side, we can see the shader itself. We can look at both the vertex shader and the fragment shader. We can also make live edits, apply them, and revert them if necessary. If errors are made, you can see those errors in the error list. Last but not least, we can see the output. Here we can cycle between how the selected ergs look, such as do we want the selected ergs highlighted? Do we want to view the output merger normally? Do we want to view the final render target normally? 
or do we want to not show the selected erg? In addition, we can choose how the other ergs are also viewed. We can show the other ergs as a flat color, show them normally, or not show them at all. We can also view the depth and stencil targets as well. On the left-hand side, we have our APIs list. If we click on a specific API, we can view the call stack. In addition, we can filter. Once we have found the erg that we would like to view, we can click on this right triangle. This will take us to the pipeline view. At the top of the pipeline view, you can see the scrubber. Here, we can change exactly what we're looking at. In this instance, we scrubbed the car. Here, we can see how the primitive processing looks, the vertex shader, rasterization, fragment shading, and frame buffer. Since this car is out of the scene, the pipeline was empty. Let's find something in the scene. The best way to find something in the scene is to go back and select one of the larger ergs. If we select this erg, we know this is the car right in front of us. We can confirm by using the selected ergs highlighting. We can then go over to the API section and double click this erg. Now that we're in the pipeline view, we can view this specific pipeline for this car. We can see that the primitive processing is here, what the car looked like after vertex shading, the rasterization, and the fragment shader, as well as pixel processing, and finally, the final frame buffer. Each of these stages has useful information about that stage. Here we can see both the position, the normal, and the UV coordinates for the primitive processing. For the vertex shader, we can view the vertex shader code as well as the vertex shader constants. In the rasterization phase, we can see the culling, the viewport, the line. We can next view the fragment shader. Here we can see the fragment shader GLSL on our right, as well as the fragment shader constants. In pixel processing, we can see the bound texture to this erg, as well as the texture parameters and other information about the texture. Here we can also perform some experiments such as changing the stencil, scissoring, and multi-sampling. Next is the pixel processing phase. Here we can see which textures are bound to specific shaders, as well as the texture formats, MIP levels, and sizes. We can also change parameters in this view as well, such as scissoring, stencil, depth, and others. We can also view our final frame buffer as well. If you go back to the main screen, we can take a look at the metrics on the right-hand side of the screen. We can see the metrics that were available at capture and at playback. Here we can see GPU metrics, pipeline metrics, and even memory metrics. We can view this data as either a short number format or a long number format. We can also view the data as a table or as a graphical representation of the pipeline. Right below is the experiment section. Here, we can introduce a simple fragment shader. This will help us determine if we're shader bound. What this does is replaces the selected erg with a version of a simple pixel shader. If we turn on normal view, you'll see that the car was shaded flat gray. We can then turn off this experiment to return it to normal. We can also replace the car's texture with a simple 2x2 two two texture. As you can see, the car's texture is very simple. Above the metrics area, we can see how much time we saved. Now let's turn off 2x2 two two textures. Last but not least, we can disable an erg completely. If we click Disable Erg, we can view the scene without that specific erg. We can also see how much time we saved by removing that erg. Some other important features in Frame Analyzer for OpenGLES is pixel history. If we click on the render target, the right-hand side will come up with the pixel history. Here we can view which ergs affected the pixel at what periods of time. The first erg to touch this pixel was the clear call. This was erg number 9. We then can see that two other ergs affected that pixel. If we select the pixel, 
and turn on our selection, we can see exactly the call that was affected. So, for instance, the road was the first erg that hit that pixel. The next erg was the car. If we select the buildings, we can see how some of the ergs were z-rejected. This is helpful for finding overdraw. Thanks for taking the time to learn about Frame Analyzer for OpenGL. If you have any questions, be sure to post them in our support forums or check out our FAQ pages. For the latest GPA news and release updates, be sure to check out our release videos. Thanks for watching.